good morning. Good morning. Let's take a moment to thank God for this beautiful day and our first outdoor worship. So welcome to all of you here and to those of you online with us. We just want to say this is the day the Lord has made and we are rejoicing. So if you would like to stand as you're able and join me in the call to worship. we have a few more people coming so let's let's chat for a bit <laughs> I wanted to say when we were getting everything out this morning we found three cookbooks so if you are one of the people who has been wanting to purchase a cookbook please let us know because we have three left March says maybe we should raise the price because they're a rare commodity now all right let's get started we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering, suffering. produces endurance, and endurance, endurance. produces character, character, and character, character. produces hope. Oh. And hope does not disappoint, hope never disappoints. for the love of God, God has, love. has been poured into our hearts, Is in our hearts. by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Thank, Thank you, God. And then join me in our opening prayer. O oh God, you pour out your spirit of grace and love. Deliver us from cold hearts and wandering thoughts, that with burning zeal and steady minds, we may worship you in spirit and truth. Amen. And our first hymn is This Is My Song. It's in your hymnal if you brought one out, or it's an insert in your program.
so glad to have you all here. And some of you are surprised to see me because you know that I'm starting vacation this weekend and uh, I'm still packing and trying to get things ready. So um, we're going to be leaving in the morning for our trip. Um, just so glad to, to be able to share with you one more time. And especially on this day where um, we, we look at our, our nation in new eyes with things that have gone this on these last couple years and especially some of the more recent stuff. Um, there has been a number of shootings and there are there's a lot of pain and grief over that, especially parents um, who are wondering what it, what it's like sending our children to school. We don't we never know what school is going to be hit next and now that another school has been hit in Texas, I think there's a lot of anxiety. I, I talked to a couple parents on Friday um, that were just they have little little children and they're wondering what the state of the, the nation is. So as we think about our nation and and pray for it, we've got a lot of concerns. Um, and so I want to I want to do my, our, my prayer first and end with the Lord's prayer, and then I have a, a little video, and I'm going to try to show you the video. Um, if kids were here, I'd have them come up and get close, but anybody can get close. I'm going to get as close to you as you can, but you will hear it, and it's a soldier story um, of, of what it's like to be a soldier um, in a foreign land and still ministering. Um, with the with the love and compassion that we have as United States citizens, so let's let's pray first. God of all the nations, God of our nation, the United States of America, we are so blessed to be in this country. We we know what it means to 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 listen to the the birds sing and to see the land be planted and to go on trips to see the mountains and the oceans. We know, Lord, what, it's, what it means to us to be here, just to be physically here. But we are also so, a social people. We have a lot of mixed cultures in our nation. And we pray, Lord, that they start to get along. That there isn't anger over someone not like us. We have the compassion that Jesus taught us to have. We open our hearts to all who come part of our community and yet we know that not everyone feels comfortable help us Lord to make one another comfortable to make our nation the better nation that we know we can be we grieve with the parents of this school in Texas and we pray Lord that that they may find their Christian heart even as they are being done this violent act of losing their child we pray for the whole community as they learn to grieve and talk with one another about what has come upon them. We also pray for the community in Buffalo that continues to recover from the shooting that happened there and the community in California for the community that, uh, for things that happened there. All over, Lord, there is recovery from all this grief and we cry with them because it doesn't need to be like that. Lord, hear our prayer for, for those around our nation, but also those across the oceans. That they may be safe, that our military serving over there may continue to, to be the best citizen of America they can be in a foreign land. For all our, our expatriates and those that represent us there, Lord, just help them to be who we were created to be. So as citizens of the world, we care for what's going on, and we don't put our heads in the sand and pretend like it's not happening. We open our hearts to you, Lord, and to the world, knowing that together, so much can be done. God, be God. Be the, be the power in this world that we need you to be so that all peoples might come together, so that we can fulfill the dream from from Jesus who prayed in, in John 17 that we would all be one just as the Trinity of God is one. So thank you, Lord, for, for hearing our prayer today in our intercession as we pray together the prayer of Jesus and we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It used to be that when veterans, uh, when soldiers went away to, to war, and they came back, they didn't talk about what happened. And curious enough, I, I did ask my dad what happened with him in World War II. He was in the Navy, and, and he described some gruesome stuff, and it's really hard to hear. But I'm gonna share with you a story now from a soldier in, that was stationed in Baghdad, and how he experienced things, both the grief and the joy. That, that he had there, but it, he felt it was fulfillment of who he was as a person. So that's why we pray for our soldiers, not just safety, but that they will be the people God created them to be out there. And when they come home, we welcome them. And when they, if they pass, we mourn for them. So I hope that, um, that you will be able to do something for Memorial Day. We'll be on the road, but I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll do something on the road um, to commemorate the day. But this is um, a soldier's story, and there's a, been a lot of, so it's an animated. <laughs> so I'm going to bring it to you, um, and if you can want to step up and see it better, you can, or just listen. through the compound. His name was Ali, and he did not want to talk to us. As opposed to a lot of the other Iraqi kids that you encountered. Yes, he was very shy. And the second or third time that I met him, he brought his best friend, Ahmed, and Ahmed was much more outgoing. And so Ali really opened up. And once I met these children, it made every day something I look forward to. We would play rock, paper, scissors. We would kick around a soccer ball. We were about as close as people that don't speak the same language can be. I had never been really good with children, and this was the first time I felt like I loved someone who wasn't my family member. But one day, Ali showed up, and I could tell something wasn't right. He kept saying, Ahmed, Ahmed, boom. We learned that Ahmed and his mother went to the gas station and a suicide bomber detonated. Ahmed's mother is dead. She died instantly. And Ahmed is in a hospital somewhere. And so other soldiers and I collected what cash we had and gave it to Ali and said, go take this to Ahmed's father. But later, I saw Ali walking up very slow and uh, he sat down on the curb next to my Humvee. He dug a hole in the ground with his fingers. He picked up a rock and put it in the hole, and then he put the dirt back on it, and he just went into the ground and said, Ahmed, and I knew that Ahmed was dead. And so I sat on the curb with him, and me and desert camouflage, carrying an M4 rifle. And him, just a North Baghdad kid, just sat there and cried. I don't know what came of him.
that's the nature of war, I suppose. But whenever I see any footage from Baghdad, I'm always kind of looking around, wondering if he's in the frame. Stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel according to Mark, Matthew, excuse me, chapter 26, verses 6 through 13. Jesus now proceeded to Bethany to the home of Simon the leper. While he was eating, a woman came in with a bottle of very expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant. What a waste of good money, they said. Why should could, she could have sold it for a fortune and given it to the poor. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why are you criticizing her? For she has done a good thing for me. You will always have the poor among you, but you won't always have me. She was poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial, and she will always be remembered for this deed. The story of what she has done will be told throughout the whole world wherever the good news is preached. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. came this morning, pastor said to me, I'm so glad it's you and not me this morning. <laughs> and we may have had different reasons, but I have to tell her that I struggled with coming to you with a positive message that would leave you, cause you to leave here with the message of Christ that will uplift you for the coming days. But that's not where I'm going to start. I went to a trunk sale yesterday. And in all of the beautiful things that they had, it was like walking through my life looking at my mother's and my grandmother's dishes and cut glass and all of those things. But I came across this and I'm going to pass it around. And I'd like you 
to look at it, each one of you. This is a little bag of Civil War bullets. Way back from the beginning of time when people were fighting for the right to be free for the right to just live in this country, no matter where it was, no matter who they were. So as I, as I talk to you for just a few minutes, can I ask you to just look at them? And I was told one is, one that was fired, the one that looks like it's mad, mangled, one that kind of didn't make it, it looks like a regular bullet, but you'll see they're also made out of many a different material than anything you see on the movies or you might use if you're a hunter or a practicer or target shooter or any of that. But they fought long and hard way back in the 18 hundreds and that's what that is from to get us to where we are today Things are flying all around here, so. I want to tell you that Memorial Day first became a thing about 1868 when they realized after the Civil War that so many people had died, 15,000 soldiers had died and they had to bury them. Some they didn't know where they were as you can imagine. There were no markers, there were no places to go place flowers. I was going to ask you how many of you, has anybody here placed flowers this weekend on a family member? Some have. That was the very beginning of Memorial Day. And not too long after that came a general who said, became very upset because when they talked about people in, who were being remembered in Memorial Day, people would clap and he said, no, you don't clap. The only thing that is appropriate is 30 seconds of silence. And then I want to tell you a story about 
a young man born in 1916. He joined the military at the age of 18. Now, I don't know about any of you, but I remember sitting when my son turned 18. There were different places in the world and I wondered, what am I going to do if he gets called to join the forces that are going to fight somewhere? I only have one son. What am I going to do? I remember thinking that, but he didn't. This young man named John Bazalone, he joined at 18, he served in the Philippines. This of course was at first in the First World War. And after three years, he had served his time so he could go home, and he went home. But then in 1940, he re-enlisted. He fought long and hard against the Japanese at that time in World War II. He didn't have a family of his own. After that, he came home for two years. And then he asked to be sent back. He felt it was his calling to serve his country. And he died on Iwo Jima by mortar shell and is buried in Arlington Cemetery in Washington. Now that's just one young man he had a choice. He wasn't called up like I was afraid of and like so many were for the Second World War who had to go and had to fight. And I can't tell you how many died and how many don't have a place where you can go and place flowers. But I do know that we have somebody <coughs> as the scripture was read that fights for us if we have listened to him. Did you, did you notice that when that lady came up to Christ and poured the perfume on his head, He didn't mention her name. He didn't call out her name. 
but he said she is doing the right thing and will be known by me. My very, very short message today to all of us. We don't have Christ sitting next to us preparing for his burial. What we do have is a chance to rejoice that he has already prepared a place for us and that if we are faithful and in doing what we need to do it'll be just like that lady pouring perfume on his head we can't go and fight we can't go and pick up a gun and fight for Christ but we have a job to do and our job is to go to whoever we know whoever we meet and spread not just the good news but to embrace them and say can I tell you can I tell you what God has done for me and what he's promised and what he is doing for me in return? So I'm going to pick on a couple of people. here so you can throw rocks at me if you like we're in the outside there must be a few extra little rocks over there Ben do you have a neighbor that you haven't talked to You've invited too many of them to dinner, huh? <laughs> Hanson, do you have a neighbor that you haven't talked to? You must have to put gas in that vehicle sometime. Oh, yeah. 
So have have you got a station attendant that you have not talked to? or a dozen cookies or something or a cup of coffee to your neighbor that you've not talked to and knock on the door and say you that I'd like to get to know you and I'd like to put my arm around you and tell you that I care about you and tell you that there's someone else that cares about you and someone else that has done so much for me and has, can do so much for you. And you don't have to know their name, just like the lady with the perfume. So as you have your celebrations for Memorial Day, which is usually all about food and getting together with family and people that you already know, maybe next week you can find somebody that you don't know and make it a goal to reach one person for Christ. church so second and fourth Sundays are going to be outside and uh, first and third will be inside so the collection plates will still be at the back um, of the I don't, do you call it the narthex what is that little area called something like that, something like that. Um, and out here we've got the giving boxes so that your checks don't blow away um, and stuff and so please if or continue to do it online um, mail the check in however um, because freedom isn't free and uh neither is you know the church building i guess but um we appreciate all your giving all that you're doing i'm sure um you know it weighs on our hearts and and we are a generous church so if you would join me in our offertory prayer oh god we recognize that we have been blessed with great abundance in offering these gifts May we be strengthened to proclaim your faithfulness and your salvation this day and always. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And our final hymn is America the Beautiful. It's also on your program. And you can 
please stand as you're able and sing it out so they hear us everywhere. charge of the the snack list and she will let us know what we need for that so it's usually pretty simple you might be able to sign up for a few things all right well um such a busy day and it's such a busy season i see the bikers are already out so be be aware of them especially the motorcycles that are out so one of the other things they need in the summer is is blood donations because so many people are having outdoor accidents and i i gave blood this weekend so if you and I remember to do that. Um, I think that's about all our announcements. In a couple of weeks, the leaders are going to meet and um, maybe make some more plans for summer. At some point, we will um, have um, a dedication of the stones that we um, we bought last year, uh, the memorial stones. Uh, we have yet to get our landscaper out and, and finish that. But you, you probably noticed that we did get our trees planted. So, um, and someone's going to water them while I'm away. 
but we could use some more flowers around here if you have a pot of flowers extra pot of flowers you could bring um, we'd love to put it in our garden because as Carol said we are worshiping here the first the second and fourth Sundays of the month will be outside next week is Pentecost Sunday so I invite you to wear red in honor of the Holy Spirit but it's also the day that we will be confirming our three students and taking them in as new members so please be a part of that that is you know kind of a big Sunday for us when we take in new members um, they have worked hard this year so I think that's it unless someone else do you have a couple just a reminder, don't forget the Memorial Day program tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Um, it's going to be in the park again. Be outside, be safe, and it's going to be warm from what I understand. So, and then just a, a little bug in your ear. Um, if you have an extra hour or you feel like getting outside and your yard is pristine, feel free to bring your hoe and your rake and help get the flower beds clean. Um, they kind of, it's been hard to get motivated this year with all the rain and all the cold and everything. Um, so like yesterday I went and bought some flowers. <laughs> Usually it's done before now. So just feel free. There's, you can't do anything wrong, but every little bit helps. Um, so thank you. Yeah. It seems this year that all the seedlings that dropped from the trees, they're all, they're all blooming. So they've all germinated. Wet enough weather that the thing can all germinate. And I pray that that's true for us, that we'll see the good thing germinate and bring, bring God glory. So now go in the peace of the Lord, knowing that you are a part of something much bigger than, than yourself, and you, we are going to fulfill God's plan for us here in Caneville and also around the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.